Every time the dry season comes, the African lungfish starts saving itself from the drying riverbed with survival techniques. First, they dig a hole about 25 centimeters deep to reduce water evaporation from their bodies. At this point, the outside temperature has reached 37 degrees Celsius. But beneath the riverbed, there is still enough moisture. In just a few days, the mud will completely harden. Small creatures that used to live with the lungfish have either fled from the heat or accepted their fate. The dry season in Africa usually lasts at least half a year. These creatures will become victims, buried in the mud. But the lungfish has a perfect survival strategy. They secrete a foamy mucus layer that retains moisture and air. Once this mucus hardens, it becomes a natural protective layer. At this point, the lungfish slows its metabolism down to 1 60th of its normal rate. With this energy saving mode, it can survive underground for up to five years. Until the next rainy season, wakes it up. As drought ravages Africa, vegetation withers and everything decays. Many animals lose their habitats and those places become their burial grounds. The African vulture is perhaps the only creature benefiting from this disaster. As they feed on the carcasses, but they are not afraid to finish off dying animals, just to make their meal easier. A loud thunderclap completely ends the months-long drought disaster. Creatures hidden underground begin to wake up. As the rain brings life, it seeps into the ground, waking creatures that have long been asleep. Unlike many other hibernating animals, the lungfish survives the dry season by digesting muscle in its tail. Although they can survive droughts, they are not immune to threats on the surface. The lungfish has been around since the Devonian period, about 200 million years before dinosaurs. As a result, they still retain both ancient lungs and gills. The gills are primarily used to extract oxygen in oxygen-rich rivers, while the lungs are for breathing in swamps with low oxygen. However, this dual respiratory system also comes with deadly risks. The beak of the shoebill stork is the size of a men's size 37 shoe. With its heavy weight, it significantly increases its hunting speed. It is now lungfish season. And the shoebill knows the habits of the lungfish in this area. They have to surface to breathe every half hour. Or they will suffocate underwater. But the lungfish are highly alert, even a light breeze is enough to scare them off. Lungfish are not easy to catch. The shoebill has to stand still for hours. It may take hours to succeed just once. 
but as an opportunistic predator, the shoebill doesn't only hunt lungfish, it preys on various other species too. A young bird falls from its nest. It immediately catches the shoebill's attention. The shoebill preys not only on other species' young, but can even kill its own offspring, if necessary. As a species strictly monogamous by nature, during the breeding season, they can only raise two chicks at a time. The hatching of the two chicks is usually spaced three days apart. Because of their large beaks, the chicks take about 40 days to learn how to balance properly. However, the smaller chick may never get a chance to stand properly. It may not survive. Starting today, the shoebill couple, they will have to make a difficult decision. When the smaller chick begs for food, they will choose to ignore it. However, when the older chick begs for water, the shoebills will always respond. Though they were born in the same nest, they are treated completely differently, like night and day. But the real nightmare is only just beginning. Its goal is simple, only by killing its sibling, can it ensure more food in the future. Though only three days apart in age, the difference in strength has become immeasurable. The weaker chick is eventually pushed out, desperately seeking protection from its parents. Upon seeing the scene before them, the shoebills know exactly what has happened. The bully chick desperately seeks comfort from its parents. However, it is cruelly ignored. As for the other chick, it will be left to fend for itself. But behind this cruelty, there is an inevitable reason. As a large bird, raising a chick takes more than half a year. Due to the long rearing cycle and large food intake, and the difficulty of finding food in the swamps, they cannot bear the added survival pressure of raising a second chick. As for the abandoned chick, from the moment it was born, it was destined to be a backup plan. This is Wildlife Wonders, exploring the wonders behind every life. Thank you for watching.